What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Ripple Van Winkle is back with another exciting video. Boy, do we have so much to go over. Usually this video is out by 7.30, 8 o'clock every morning, but the amount of research that we put in today, you are about to be blown away. This is definitely gonna be our longest video yet. Make sure you stick in to the end. We are going to be talking about SBI, Ripple, XRP, a platform that is being developed for central bank digital currencies to move across. Also, six central banks and how they tie in to Ripple and yes, XRP. That is correct. Please make sure you like, please make sure you subscribe, join the channel. Let's get into this. Boy, uh, I am excited. First, XRP currently down 1.45%, sitting at 0.176. We have moved out of that 18, 19 cent range and we have gone down. What do I think is going to happen? As I have said, when I first started this channel, I do see XRP coming to sub 10 cents at some point. I thought it was gonna be over the summer. Clearly it's not, but I do still believe it's going to be this year. This is just my opinion. Do what you want with it. But this is what I think is gonna happen. XRP is gonna go slightly lower. We might touch 16, maybe high 15s. But after that, we are going to shoot up. We are going to go to that 25 to 30 cent range. Everyone is going to get excited. Everyone go is going to think that the bull run has started. People are going to start throwing money in. And then what's going to happen? Boom. The carpet is going to be pulled out from under your feet. This is when we go down to its all time lows. For the year, we will then see our sub 10 cent XRP. How low can it go? I do not know. But I do know one thing, when it does hit sub 10, I am buying. I might try to be a little, a little fancy and wait for 8 cents, but we are going to go down. Once we hit that new low range, which could be anywhere from, we'll say, 4 cents to 8 cents. Once that range is hit and we hang out there for a little bit, this is when the actual bull run will start. I believe Q1, Q2, 2021 is when we see the bull run Going. I don't even want to call it a bull run. I want to call it a bull market. There is a big difference between a bull run and a bull market. Remember that. Anyways, enough about that. Enough about what I think. Let's get into this news. Let's get into the research that I have prepared for you in regards to Ripple, XRP, and central banks. There is so much to cover. First, from, from Lord Lionel, give him a follow. He's been putting this out like clockwork for the past month. XRP community said it will be delayed. Nope, it's all on track. To the doubters, I say this. Middle finger emoji, that is right. June 2020, SBI to release their smartphone application. And guess what? What came out? SBI's VCs trade app, the iOS version. Smartphone application service has started today. You can easily enjoy crypto asset trading anytime and anywhere this is great news here is the website it is translated so if you're reading it and it doesn't seem right something seems off that is because google does its best to translate this for you but what do we see right on the home screen xrp to the jpy that is right this is what we've been waiting for this is going to be the start for sbi mark my words they're going to start ramping up and firing. Now we can have people over in Japan directly investing into XRP with the Japanese yen. This is what we want to see, people. Here we go as we scroll down. Just gives you a look over at the app and how it looks and what you can do. Fantastic news. Thank you, SBI. Let's jump over to our next article, which comes from Bloomberg. Contactless payments skyrocket because no one wants to handle cash. Worried about COVID-19? Shoppers use phones to buy and get food. Key pairs on credit card readers are also a red flag in a pandemic. That is right. But what does this all mean? How is this good for XRP and Ripple? Well, it's actually good for the whole cryptocurrency landscape why because we are going to digital payments no longer are people wanting to pay in cash swipe their cards they want to hold their own phone their own device where they know where it's been where they know who has touched it and they want to just turn it around and scan a code to make a payment covid19 has sped up the adoption of digital payments let's keep going 
Up next, all right, here, this is where we're gonna get interesting. This, here comes the juicy stuff, everyone. Have a listen. This is not speculation. This is not hype. This is pure facts. From the Cryptic Poet, give him a follow, one Cryptic Poet. L3COS proposes a, the world's first regulated blockchain operating system. Guess who will be the bridge? I'll give you a hint. The Bank of England is a paid customer of Ripple. That is a direct quote from Brad Gallinghouse. Have a listen to this. 47 seconds long. Here we go. You know, Ripple has from the earliest days invested in engaging regulators. And, it, you know, when we go to Washington, D.C., we go to other regulatory bodies around the world and explain we aren't circumventing a KYC check, a, a know your customer check. We aren't circumventing an AML, anti-money letter check. We are circumventing BSA. Oh, there are lots of three-letter acronyms. I'll stop there. <laughs> but look, the Bank of England is a paid customer of Ripple's. There's another central bank we haven't announced that we're working with very actively. Like, th we will continue to work with central banks. We'll continue to work with regulators and educating them about how we can accelerate the financial ecosystem, which is good on many, many, many levels, and not in some way circumvent and enable anonymous transactions that obviously the government has concern. All right, listen, there you have it. The takeaway from this, Ripple will continue to work with central banks. They will continue to work with regulators. We also know they are working with 40 to 50 central banks around the world, not just working with them and trying to onboard them, but they are teaching them about digital assets and digital currencies. You cannot name another company that is working with 40 to 50 central banks. You cannot name another company that is even working with one central bank. Let's be honest, the Bank of England is massive and they have been a paying Ripple customer for at least four years now. So let's let's jump over. Let's take a look at L3COS. What is this? Right? It's because it's proposed for the world's first regulated blockchain operating system. We did some digging. This is from PN Newswire, L3COS proposes to build the world's first regulated blockchain based operating system for the Bank of England, a paying customer of Ripple. Let's have a read. L3COS, the only known blockchain platform for the regulated digitalization of economies today submitted its proposal to the Bank of England to build the world's first regulated chain based operating system. The Bank of England is one of several sovereign authorities, including the U.S. Treasury, which has begun the process of investigating the applications of regulated blockchain technologies. These will provide these institutions with fast, secure, and transparent means of payment, as well as efficiencies of administration. The L3COS proposal is in response to a public consultation paper from the Bank of England on central bank digital currency opportunities, challenges, and designs. L3COS has developed unique triple layer consensus technology and is the first blockchain platform in the world to offer individual authorities the opportunity to regulate digital economies in a verifiable and legal manner. It upholds the autonomy and, so and sovereignty of individual authorities in a regulated and legal compliant from while being immutable, fully auditable, traceable, and transparent, making fraud, money, laun money laundering, or other banking market financing impossible. Then we go on to hear a quote from the CEO. Blockchain is a tried and tested technology with over 40% of S&P 500 companies using it to increase efficiencies and reduce cost. Over 40% of the S&P 500 companies are looking into using blockchain to reduce costs and to increase efficiencies. Now, central banks and governments are looking at how this technology can work for them. Let's jump over the next article. Here we go, people. Listen up. Central banks receive submissions from L3COS for regulated digital currency operating systems. L3COS proposes the world's first regulated blockchain operating system. This follows a submission to the Bank of England in early June. This article we are reading is from June 25th, four days ago, people. Have a listen. 
Six central banks have today received submissions for the development of the world's first regulated blockchain operating system. Central banks are studying the application of regulated blockchain technologies as they look to provide their institutions with fast, secure, and transparent means of payments as well as efficiencies of administration. So once again, we're looking at a blockchain technology for fast, secure, and transparent payments. Think about that. In addition to the work of the Bank of England is undertaking on digital currencies, the Bank of France, the Bank of the Netherlands, the Bank, the Bank of South Korea, the Bank of Thailand, the Bank of Canada, and the European Central Bank, where our favorite person in the world, Christine Lagarde, is sitting on, are all assessing the opportunities and challenges presented by central bank digital currencies and have received submissions from L3COS, the only known blockchain platform to the regulated digitalization of economies. The L3COS submissions are in response to the request for proposals from central banks as they push forward with their work on digital currencies. L3COS has developed unique AAA consensus technology and is the first blockchain platform in the world to offer individual authorities the opportunity to regulate digital economies in a verifiable and legal manner. It upholds the autonomy and sovereignty of individual authorities in a regulated and legal compliant form while being immutable, fully auditable, traceable, and transparent, making fraud, money laundering, or other black market financing impossible. So here's a little about L3COS. Its US base enables the digitalization of society's transactions, ensuring they are fast, safe, verifiable, regulated, transparent, efficient, and legal. Doesn't that not sound like everything the XRP ledger is using its unique AAA consensus system and enables sovereignties to digitalize transactions faster, more effectively, more effectively with greater transparency and stronger security. As blockchain technology is immutable, fully, we already read that. They keep repeating that's not a big deal. Okay, so let's jump over to the L3COS websites. We head over to the governments tab. It's the world's first universal regulated blockchain ecosystem for governments. Have a listen to the, their little slogan. It makes blockchains work for regulations, not against it, and it wins people's trust. What has Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Lawson been preaching for the last four years? That they work with the regulators and not against them. That has been very, very key by Brad and Chris. They want to make sure every time that they are in front of a CNBC anchor, MSNBC, CNN, you name it, that they tell you that Ripple, the company, is working with their regulators and not against them. The same exact thing that L3COS is telling us. Let's have a quick listen to this video. Digital transformation has the potential to solve some of the most pressing problems of governance. Lycos, a blockchain-based operating system, will help you unleash this potential, reduce administrative expenses, and save public money by eliminating bureaucracy, adapt to changes, and respond to emergencies fast with customizable process automation. Go green with paperless workflow. Win voters' trust and support. Lecos enables all this and more. By introducing smart contracts, it finally replaces paper documents and automates the implementation of rules and policies. Lecos, forward into the future. There we go. So that's Lecos. So what did they say, Lecos? They are working with six central banks. The Bank of France, the Bank of the Netherlands, the Bank of South Korea, Bank of Thailand, the Bank of Canada, and the European Central Bank. We jump over to xrprightnow.com, Ripple Van Winkle's very own website. Check this out. This is on February 10th, 2020, four months ago. The Bank of France speaks, speaks about Ripple's blockchain and central bank digital currency. Let's scroll down. February 2nd, the Central Bank of France published a document titled The Central Bank Digital Currency. And I quote, potential circulation of the wholesale CBDC on several blockchains. Oversight by the central bank of this circulation would be complex and could have implications for financial stability and monetary policy transmissions. 
that are difficult to anticipate at this stage. The two different approaches could be taken from this question. The central bank itself puts itself in a position to issue, issue a wholesale CBDC units on any blockchain that can be used as a medium exchange as its counter. This solution will be extremely complex to manage and would result in the central bank having to organize circulation of the, of the wholesale CBDC on blockchain whose technologies government's frameworks are out of its control. Then they go on to say units issued on, on the wholesale CBDC's native blockchain could be transferred to other blockchains since the attributes of a unit of the wholesale cbdc may be integrated in a crypto asset circulating on another blockchain which is possible on ethereum and ripple for example it would then become possible to use the unit on this blockchain at this point from the central bank's perspective the unit would be immobile no movement would be recorded in the distributed ledger until one of the users of the wholesale central bank digital currency originals blockchain made it circulate and this intervening period the wholesale cbdc units could be exchanged via the secondary blockchain between entities not belonging to the digital currency's formal circulation network so we go down then here's the quote the crypto wolf put into a nice tweet for us when ripple was mentioned by france's central bank attributes of a unit of cbcc may be integrated in a crypto asset circulated on another blockchain for example ripple so we know that the that the central bank of france has looked into and they know about ripple and how they could leverage ripple net to move their central bank digital currency the next bank on the list was the bank of the netherlands let's have a look here this was two years ago the Netherlands Central Bank recognizes Ripple XRP as an excellent real-time payment infrastructure. The Netherlands Central Bank, which is called the DNB, the ne Netherlands Bank, I'm sure I jacked that up, touted Ripple's blockchain technology as a fast process that takes place every two to five seconds, affirming that Ripple is a good deal faster than Bitcoin and requires less computer capacity. And I quote, Banks have shown an increasing interest in the Ripple protocol. Integration of the payment protocol would allow banks to offer their customers the ability to transfer any amount of money in any currencies to other institutions that use the protocol without the need for intermediaries. That would lead to cost savings for banks. At present, one German and two American banks are using Ripple's network while several other banks are experimenting with it. We jump over to XRP chat. March 31st, 2018, Zeddy44 threw an article out there, which is from the Central Bank of the Netherlands. It is a PDF. There was a section in it, complexity of infrastructure. Another important supply side factor is the complexity of the infrastructure. In the current situation in the Netherlands and in Europe, the infrastructure is made up of many different parties and components, making it difficult for a single provider to bring all parties together and get things done. The problem is, the problem is exaggerated by the internal nature of the European payment market, with operators in other countries often being involved in processing Dutch payments, for example. To date, innovations can often only be used at national leather levels. Cross-border solutions are still rare. This can mean that similar solutions developed in different locations are incompatible with each other, leaving the European payment market fragmented. One exception to this are innovation from card companies such as MasterCard and Visa, who international characters mean that they do create solution that can be used for cross-border payments. This means, for example, that contactless debit cards issued in the Netherlands can also be used in other countries. Owing to the complex infrastructure, initiatives are mainly concentrated at the forefront of the payment system. All right, listen up. Here where it gets good. That complexity makes innovation at the back end more difficult to implement, though it is precisely in the area of infrastructure that innovates could generally improve the payment market. An example would be real-time payments. If payments could be made and received in real time, this would change the payment landscape significantly. The Ripple Network Protocol is an example of an innovation that could contribute to that change by enabling banks to use this infrastructure to facilitate real-time payments. Here is the PDF from the Central Bank of the Netherlands talking about the Ripple Protocol and how it could be used 
to move central bank digital currencies. Very, very interesting people. What was next on the list? The Bank of Thailand. What do we have here from Coindesk? June this month, 2020, Thai Central Bank taps central company for first digital currency payments. Ripple is massively tied up in Thailand. The Bank of Thailand developing a prototype payment system that will rely on the central bank digital currency. Listen to this. The central bank announced Thursday it would target businesses and would design a payment system that could be integrated with the procurement and financial management system of the Siam Cement Group, Thailand's oldest cement manufacturer and its suppliers. The bank said a digital currency prototype is being developed by Digital Ventures, a fintech face and venture capital wing of Siam Commercial Bank. The same Siam Commercial Bank that invested in Ripple in 2016, everyone. According to the statement, the project will also include a feasible study on a payment system. The central bank digital currency project will begin next month and is expected to be concluded by the end of the year. This project marks an important step in broadening central bank digital currency scope and adoption to wider audiences, starting with large corporates, said the press release builder, uh, the press release published by the Bank of Thailand's website. The Bank of Thailand said it expects CBDC prototypes to build on the knowledge put together under Project Inathom in th or in Thayan was launched in 2018 and it's a collaborative project involving the Bank of Thailand and eight leading Thai financial institutions to bolster technological readiness in Thailand's financial sector. Then it goes on to say, the Bank of Thailand set its experts a CBDC prototype to build on a knowledge put together un under the project. Bank of Thailand's prototype comes at a time where central banks around the world have been toying with the idea of a central bank digital currency. The recent job posting on the Bank of Canada's website revealed the Canadian central bank's plan to develop a CBDC. Lovely. Here it is. Canada's central bank is, issue is serious about designing a central bank digital currency. What do we have here? Corey Johnson with the Prime Minister of Canada. Let's jump over. From Stuart XRP on January 5th, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada with Corey Johnson. The tweet was deleted, but how many of you remember Corey Johnson putting out this picture on his Twitter feed saying this matters and he's shaking his hand. Why? Because Ripple and the XRPL are going to bridge all central bank digital currencies. Listen. And I'm not done yet. Central bank digital currencies are not going to interoperate with each other. They need platforms. They need something built out. That is what the XRP ledger is going to do. That is what Lycos is going to do. Lycos is the first universal regulated blockchain ecosystem for governments. These governments are creating or are helping create central bank digital currencies. Ripple and XRPL are going to bridge them all. You already see the connections. The Bank of France looked into Ripple and RippleNet. So did the Bank of Netherlands. So did the Bank of Thailand. So did the Bank of Canada. Corey Johnson with the Prime Minister. This is all being worked out behind the scenes, people. And then up last but not least, the European Central Bank. October 2nd, 2017, before Christine Lagarde even got involved when she was still working with the IMF. The cross European Central Bank put out cross-border instant payments are coming. Have a listen. 37 seconds. Well, there's no sound to it, but it's talking about cross-border instant payments and why they take so long. And since by the end of 2018, the European Central Bank will provide your bank with a new service. Then we jump over European Central Bank, a PDF that they put out in collaborations with the Bank of Japan. Where is SPI from? That is right. Project Stellar to synchronize cross-border payments. Let's jump down. Let's do a quick little search here. Section 2.1.2, selected private sector initiatives. 
selected people. Ripple was selected here. A community group on a worldwide consortium, W3C, which was gifted actually by, uh, by Ripple, is developing further the Interledger protocol. A set of rules that allow payments to be sent across different types of ledgers. ILP is built on an, in, on an initial proposal laid out by a white paper. A protocol for interledger payments by Thomas and Schwartz. Yes, Schwartz, that is David Schwartz, a.k.a. Joel Katz. Chapter 3 provides a more detailed description on the underlying concepts of ILP. But Ripple has developed XCurrent, which connects financial institutions via a global network of participating entities. XCurrent is built around ILP and enables bidirectional communication between participating entities and coordination of payments across ledgers. I am going to say this one more time. The central bank digital currencies are going to run through the ILP and XRP are going to bridge them. There is a reason the Bank of France, that the Bank of the Netherlands, that the Bank of South Korea, that the Bank of Thailand, that the Bank of Canada, and the European Central Bank have all been in talks with Ripple, have all been in talks about Ripple's product, its sweet products, have all been in talks with the W3C. They know what the ILP is. There is a reason. You do not see these central banks talking with any other cryptocurrency company. You do not see them talking with Satoshi Nakamoto about Bitcoin. You do not see them talking with Justin Sun about Tron. No, they are talking with Ripple and Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Lawson and Joel Katz about the ILP and how they are all going to bridge their central bank digital currencies. The world is going digital. CBDCs are going to be created and they need a way to talk with each other. And the only way to move those CBDCs across a secure network that is working with the governments, working within the system and not trying to find the system is through the ILP and RippleNet people. It is that simple. Let this all sink in. Six central banks. That's just to get started. We know Ripple is talking with 40 to 50 central banks. This is just six. And I just showed you all the proof that these six central banks are working or have tested or have been in the same room with the executives from Ripple. They know about Ripple. They know about the ILP. They know about the W3C. They know about RippleNet. And they know what XRP is meant to do. It is not me saying it, but the Bank of the Netherlands said, if you can fix the payment system and make everything interoperable and move within seconds compared to days, it is a game changer. And that is exactly what XRP is doing. Let that all sink in. All right, everyone. Listen, that's going to do for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, please subscribe, please share the content. This is absolutely tremendous news and it all goes back to Lycos, the world's first universal regulated blockchain ecosystem for the governments. Look it up, l3cos.com. That's gonna do it for me. Ripple Van Winkle is out.